I taught at Wacom for 25 years. It was called DevEd, which was the jump start into the, you know, the degrees, the degree track, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed it because before that I taught special ed quite a bit. So uh, it was kind of the same kind of thing, you know, take them from where they're at, put them, this is where you've got to go. I'm 81, going to be 82 pretty quick. And uh, I'm Barbara McHugh. What else did you want to know where I live? Up on Henry Street, um, bright blue house, bright blue. Not the navy type blue next door, but the bright blue that uh, my husband and I loved. It was a mistake why it kind of got in the house, actually, but it was a beautiful mistake. It's wonderful. Um, we've always, my husband and I always had other people living with us, just people that needed, they just needed time or space or whatever for a while. We're not, we're not in the business. We just let them stay here. We have a pretty big house, so, you know, they just come and park for a while. My father was a chemical engineer, so he was uh, basically started out in the pulp and paper industry up there. But uh, he was really originally from the Maritimes, and when you're from the Maritimes in Canada, it's really, really, you don't leave the Maritimes. That's, you know, you kind of, people don't really want to talk to you anymore or visit you anywhere because you left God's country, okay? So, <laughs> so anyway, so we spent time in the Maritimes too, but uh, basically we moved, we kept moving across Canada a lot. Any family that I had back east, they're... It's kind of, that's what they do. You know, their grandparents did it. The parents before that did it. Um, and that's just kind of what you were. And it kind of helped identify you as a person in that, in that particular thing. Whereas here, we tend to be much more open to ideas. Um, and really, I think people have to extend themselves when they're in an independent situation like that. You know, and I think, I noticed that here in Bellingham. I think it's amazing. I love this community. Just wonderful. A good point about aging, to me, you have to keep, if you don't have questions to ask every day that you really want to learn the answers to, I don't know, you sort of, you know, your mind starts to get crusty. <laughs> My kids say I'm ADHD. I am ADHD. I'm, I'm doing this and that. I'm already thinking about that guy's uh, tarp on the back of his garage there is starting to flap open. He's going to have rain coming through. And I better, after this is all through, I better contact somebody. I wonder if it's, you know, it's like craziness. It's crazy making. I've got a pretty well-worn body, i got to say. <laughs> i got to say, the last time um, was a very, it was a really challenging. I used a lot of Medicare on that one. Um, and, you know, I, I, it was just like, to me, it was an opportunity to say thank you so many times. Because the people that worked on me, and the things that they did, I mean, and they said, one person said to me, well, we really learned a lot <laughs> from your operation. I said, awesome, that is great. See, so in the process of my feeling grateful for what they did, they learned something and they thanked me. They said, this was, this was good. This was a good experience here, you know, that, that we did. So, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of health challenges, really. But they've all, as I look back on them, that, time they were like anybody right all of our health challenges have been tough for all of us no matter what they were so uh yeah it's uh again it's, it's what we signed up for right thinking about letting go of some things and that's a loss in your life yeah i think that i tend to kind of hold on to trying to make myself my notebooks, they're good. That's one of the places they, they really play a part, is that I keep a lot of letters from people. I've got boxes of them, which is just silly, um, because I'm the only one that's going to enjoy it. I need to keep reading them, right? So now I'm putting a lot of them into my notebooks, inserting them, highlighting what I really loved about what that letter said, okay? When my husband passed, he'd been, he was challenged with Alzheimer's for 10 years, actually. And fortunately, I was able to keep him home until the last month before he passed away. And there was a lot that went on there that was just wonderful. It was a different relationship. And I had to think about it that way because it was a very, very hard, uh, very hard illness for him, for me too. But I mean, it was a very hard illness. And it was like they, they, I've said, they've said it over and over again. 
It's like the long goodbye. So I had a chance to kind of, you know, it wasn't like a sudden break. It was just a very long, um, at the time I didn't think it was learning. It was trying to get through because there were so many pieces that had to be balanced at that point. But there were, there were things there that I would never have experienced in any other way. There's no really way to prepare, I think. Um, I don't know. I don't think I did. I just kept trying to work with it every day. And I think the goodbyes in our life, we have to kind of, it's, it's like everything. We enjoy it right now if we can, you know, inquire about it, learn about it. So our life today isn't written. We shouldn't write it down or we don't record it in pen. It's all in pencil. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's the way it is.